Matthew 12, verses 43 to 45. When the unclean spirit is gone out of man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Now I haven't studied this Bible verse much. But it is very interesting as this is speaking of what happens to a demon essentially. An unclean spirit as soon as it leaves a person. Have you ever not found it very hard to come back to the Lord after you've backslidden? Have you ever not found it difficult to start praying again, start seeking the Lord again? As soon as you lost that first love, it becomes very difficult for you to come back. This Bible verse explains that when it leaves, when Jesus comes in and that demonic unclean spirit leaves, at some point in time it comes back. And when he comes back, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. That is what Christ does to us, you know? When you come to Christ, he breaks the idols down. When you come to Christ, he breaks the altars down. Just as when Jesus went into the temple and flipped over the tables, he flips over the tables, he takes the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is now you, he dwelleth in man, and he cleanses you completely. 1 Corinthians 3, verses 16 through 18. Know ye not that ye are temple of God? And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. And then it has a warning. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. You know, I remember when I first came to Jesus Christ, the first thing that Jesus changed in my life was my vocabulary. I used to have a little bit of a filthy, disgusting vocabulary. And as soon as I came to the Lord, I remember it was immediate, the change, that as soon as I would try to speak those words, conviction would hit me and I would stop it right there in his tracks in my mouth. You see, because when you come to Christ in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And immediately the Holy Spirit begins to convict you and reprove you of sin. John 16, 8, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. This is why when you are about to sin, he tells you, watch out there. Hey, 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 watch that attitude. Hey, guard that mouth. The Holy Spirit is our comforter and it is there to guide us into all truth in Jesus. But what happens when that person, when that believer is first on fire for the Lord, living for the Lord, on fire for the Lord, worshiping God, reading the scriptures, living a holy lifestyle for God, 
And then as time progresses, that individual begins to become lukewarm. As time progresses, the holy thing becomes something common. In fact, if you notice in a lot of congregations and to a lot of brothers and sisters in the Lord, you can't use the word holy. You can't tell a person believe and repent. The large majority of times when you come to a person and you expose that work of darkness and you expose that sin, immediately what they do is exactly the opposite that God tells you to do. Man begins to immediately justify the sin. This is why it says in 1 Corinthians, let no man deceive himself. In my walk, I've had moments where I've been on fire for the Lord. And then all of a sudden, I remember one thing led to another and it's, you end up in a very, very bad place spiritually. You end up in a place spiritually where you no longer seek him, you no longer praise him. When you're at your job and people are saying jokes that are inappropriate, now you start laughing with them. And all of a sudden, one little bad word starts slipping out of that tongue. And that little bad word that slipped out of that tongue now led to something else. It's these little foxes that spoil the vines. And it's these little foxes that ruins the relationship of believers between them and God because he is holy know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you and my hope today is that if this is your situation if your situation is that of just as what happened in Matthew 12 43 to 45 that you came to Jesus. Jesus did his job. Jesus transformed you. Jesus renewed you, but you've backslidden. Then now people are gonna say there's no such thing as a backslider, yet the scriptures tell you that God will heal your backsliding. You know, it's time for you to stop thinking that you're so wise and, and try to sneak your way out of certain things. If the scriptures tell you that you can backslide, then that means that there's a possibility for you to backslide. But the scriptures also tell you that when you do, he will heal your backslidings. Turn to him. He is waiting. When the unclean spirit is gone out of man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I come out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven of the spirits more wicked than himself. I'll tell you, when I've backslidden in my life, it has been hard to come back to Jesus. Hard. As soon as you want to pray, thoughts come in your mind telling you, oh, now you're going to pray and seek God after you've done all that? When you're trying to stay ready and you say, okay, this, this Sabbath I'm going to go and I'm going to congregate with brothers and sisters, or this Sunday I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to congregate with brothers and sisters, all hell breaks loose. Things start happening left and right. But I want you to know that there's one that's stronger than any unclean spirit. That there's one that is stronger than any principality, than any stronghold, and any demonic entity. And his name is Jesus Christ.
The scriptures tell us that he holds the keys to hell and of death. The scriptures tell us in 1 Timothy 3.16 that God was manifested in the flesh. The scriptures tell us in John 1.1 1, 1 that that word was God. And then in John 1.14 that that word became flesh and dwelt among us. And, that, and once that word has touched you. And once that word has saved you. And you've made that error. Of allowing the holy place of God to become filthy. It at times feels impossible to come back to that holy God. But just as the prodigal son. But just as the prodigal son. He went and he spoiled all of his inheritance. While he was yet still a far way off. The Father was looking out for him. And the Father today is looking out for you and telling you that he wants to restore you. That all, although all of these things that we've spoken about, the demonic entities, the demonic spirits, the unclean spirits, filthiness in the temple, I just want to remind you that none of that, none of that, has even an inch on the King of Kings. In 2 Chronicles 29.16 and 2 Chronicles 29.3.25, we see something amazing. In that section, in that area, when Hezekiah began his reign, there was a lack of worship to God. There was a lack of reverence to God. The scripture says he in the first year of his reign in the first month opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. The doors of the house of the Lord were so messed up that you couldn't even open the front door. No one cared about it either. They had allowed the holy thing of God to become as nothing. And he brought in the priests and the Levites and gathered them together in the east street. And said unto them, Hear me, ye Levites, sanctify now yourself, and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers, and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. Today God does not dwell in the temples made by men, right? But the scriptures tell you that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Ye are the temple of God. And if you have allowed filthiness to take over your life. And because of this, you no longer have a relationship with God. I want to pray with you right now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence asking for your protection. Asking for your covering. And we simply humbly repent for our sins. I have deceived myself into believing that, that I could live a double life. I justified my actions, Lord. I justified my acts. I justified it all and said that, hey, it's okay because you've saved me. Yet you've convicted me all along. Why would you convict me if it didn't matter if I did or did not that sin? You convicted me because you knew what was best for me. And yet I did not listen. And yet I did not follow your instructions. And here I am today, a broken vessel. Asking in the name of Jesus. For you to take the filthiness out of my life. I renounce all adult content in the name of Jesus. I renounce any idols of theology that I have allowed to come between my relationship and you in the name of Jesus. I renounce all ties with Freemasonry, all ties with anything Masonic that may be in my home that I do not even know is there. 
in the name of Jesus pride in the name of Jesus set me free in your precious blood amen I'm not one who believes that magical prayers can simply do something it's much more than simply a prayer but I believe that when you come before God humbled he is there to deliver you he wants all men everywhere to repent and that includes you Jesus is coming very soon very very soon get ready in the name of Jesus I love you I care for you if you need a set of Bible if you need anything contact me on my website I'm there for you and your family. God bless you.